In an increasingly interconnected world, nations are taking a closer look at their economic and geopolitical dependencies. One term that is gaining attention is de-risking. But what does it mean and why is it becoming so important? De-risking is all about identifying and addressing excessive dependencies by diversifying supply chains and enhancing resilience. It's a strategy to balance opportunities with the risks associated with the foreign engagements, particularly with countries like China. We can say de-risking is much more nuanced than decoupling. So when did de-risking become a priority? The focus on de-risking evolved over several key events. In 2019, concerns began with debates over Chinese companies like Huawei and ZTE in 5G networks. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic exposed vulnerabilities in global supply chains, especially in essential goods. In 2022, Russia's invasion of Ukraine shifted the geopolitical landscape, prompting the European Union to reassess dependencies on China. In March 2023, the term de-risking was formally introduced by Ursula von der Leyen, marking a significant shift in the European Union strategy. By June 2023, the EU developed a comprehensive strategy for de-risking, focusing on economic resilience and supply chain security. In 2024, de-risking continues to evolve, with member states implementing their own measures aligned with EU strategies. So now the question is how? How do countries actually go about de-risking? Here are the key steps adopted by the EU. Investment screening, strengthening mechanisms to scrutinize foreign investments, particularly from China. The second one is supply chain diversification. Reducing reliance on Chinese imports by sourcing from alternative markets. Third one is legislative measures. Enacting laws to protect economic security and resilience. The fourth key point deals with public awareness, engaging in discussions and controlling the narrative about the risks associated with China. The fifth step is about bilateral and multilateral cooperation, strengthening alliances to address shared risks. Sixth step is strategic autonomy initiatives, developing domestic capabilities in critical technologies and industries. And the final one, monitoring and evaluation, continuously assessing and adapting strategies. So several countries have taken concrete steps to implement de-risking measures, whereas others haven't. For example, France advocated for a robust EU investment screening and focused on strategic autonomy. Germany shifted from decoupling to de-risking, maintaining ties with China while assessing risks. Czech Republic, who was an early adopter of de-risking influenced by US pressure. Lithuania took decisive actions like excluding Huawei from 5G networks and withdrawing from China's 16 plus 1 initiative. Other countries like Denmark, the Netherlands and Italy have adopted varying degrees of de-risking strategies balancing economic ties with security concerns. Not all the countries are eager to de-risk. Some, like Greece and Hungary, maintain strong economic ties with China and are hesitant to take measures to de-risk. Others, like Portugal and Austria, are cautious about actions that might strain relations with China. Today's video is a concise summary of a comprehensive 166-page report published by the European Think Tank Network on China. We have distilled the key points for you. If you are interested in diving deeper into the full details, we have included a link to the entire report in the description below. De-risking is a complex and evolving strategy, balancing the need for economic security with the realities of global interdependence. As the world continues to navigate these challenges, the concept of de-risking will likely remain central to international policy discussions. Thanks for watching. 
If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments below.